Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Race Face Driver Spotlight. Today, we're going to be going down to Alito, Texas, where we find 18-year-old Caden Honeycutt. Caden, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing great, Rod. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing great. Um, man, you've got so much stuff going on. It's kind of like crazy. But before we get into the racing side of it, is there anything going on in your life new outside of racing? Well, um, every day that I can, I work out with my mom on CrossFit. Um, fortunately, I'm not doing any more sports in school, so I'm not playing football, baseball, or anything like that. I've kind of narrowed my down to racing as uh, one sport for me, and um, and I'd be able to do school workouts or anything. So I go and do CrossFit with my mom every day that I can after school. That's awesome. Does she does she work you under the table? Um, you know, she likes to brag on how much she's m much better than me, but every workout I do, I'm pretty much better. <laughs> Be careful there. Yeah. All right. So, you know, the, I guess the big news that's going on right now is the fact that you have signed to, to drive for Justin Johnson racing in the cars tour, um, which I personally think is probably the best development series anywhere in the nation. So, What's your take on being with Justin Johnson? Are you excited to be there? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, having Jason Stanley as a group chief, we we work really well together. <clears throat> and uh, we actually just like getting into our own backgrounds of what uh, we have in common. And we've actually raced the same cars, like the cars I'm racing now is the cars he used to race when he lived in Texas. Um, so we have a great, great uh, relationship already. And it's only been the first race. So I can only see where it's going to go from here. Um, I love Jason. I think we're going to work great together. Justin is also a great aspect as well. He knows what he's doing. And just every everybody as a whole, we're just, we get along so well. And we just love racing, you know. Um, they're like backstreet 90s boys that race dirt for a living. That's actually an asphalt as a modern time, which is great. You know, I love that aspect. Um, and that kind of, you know, the vibe of the team is always, you know, wanting to win. If we're like running second or fifth and, and you know, come up short of a win, we're mad. We're frustrated. We're disappointed. We want to win so badly. Um, so that's kind of that's definitely a team that I want. And I think, you know, as far as uh, Dylan went this past weekend, I think we're really going to show a lot of strong runs and uh, cook off a couple of wins here. Hopefully more than just a couple. Hopefully we can get like four or five, which is, you know, it's a tough aspect, but I think it's doable. Yeah. And, and the, you know, the bottom line was you were fast there from the time that you unloaded up until it come time to qualify. You know, I mean, you were at the top of the charts constantly. And, you know, I think that, again, we're not looking to put blame anywhere, but I think that we've kind of narrowed it down that you might have gotten a bad batch of tires along with some other teams. Yeah, um, we weren't the only team that had the issues throughout the whole weekend. Justin had the same issues um, throughout practice on Saturday as well as as the race day. He had the same issues. Um, he got he put on a mock set and went out ran a Q lap and ran about three tenths slower than what he actually did in qualifying. Um, and it just it just flowed through the entire uh, pit area and it eventually just got to us like at the absolute worst time. Um, if it's kind of weird because you go and look at the lineup and then you go and look at the race results on who qualified up front and who, uh, who qualified first. And it, they just, all those front runners that went out first had just went out there and ran the top 10, which is kind of weird. But uh, at the same time, we had the 16th tire selection. Um, and then the people that did have the issues were behind us as well. So um, it was just at, just the absolute worst timing. Um, I know it was us and Lee Pulliam and his crew he was pretty frustrated. I saw his Facebook post. Um, so we luckily we know it wasn't the actual car and we actually knew it was tires. Um, uh, the car was just it was flawless. I mean, we were shaking our head, uh, just scratching our head on what to do to make it faster. I mean, it was just so quick and that rolled around and just it just was so disappointing. And we just had no idea what happened. But after we few hours of uh, letting the race go by and just realizing what actually happened, um, I think it kind of sunk in and say, hey, it wasn't really our fault. Nothing much we can do. Just move on to next week, knowing that we're still going to be right. uh, just as fast. Yeah. And, and, and the bottom line is you guys have been fast every every time you've taken that car on track, even even in the but before the season started, when you went up to Orange County and uh, and you ran up there. I mean, 
uh, gosh, I, I was there with you that, that day and it was cold. I mean, we got there, there was even ice in between turns one and two, it was so cold. And the car was just super fast. I mean, you were up there, you were, you were like a 10th off of some of the fastest laps that had ever been turned there. So I think that's yeah, going to um, be really encouraging. And, oh, and I absolutely. Wanna, and, absolutely. You know, and I want to, I want to comment on what you said. When I, what I saw up there was that everybody in that group were just like, we're racers. We just want to race and we want to win. And I think it's a good fit for you. I think, I think you're gonna have a lot of success there this year. Yeah, I think so too. Um, you know, the test in Orange County went great. Um, obviously you were able to witness me almost knocking down the wall and qualifying lap and standing back in the Prado with no fear. Um, but no, I, I've, I really enjoyed that test and that really opened my eyes and just, just saw like, maybe they work out of a little garage, but Jason does such an amazing job for what he has. And it's, I just love the people I'm working with and I think it's just going to go a long way and I can't wait to go back to Orange County here uh, pretty soon. Um, I think we had a, a great test and automatically have some track time. So that's a good thing. Right. All these tracks that I'm going to, we're not going to, I'm haven't seen at all besides maybe one or two, but um, yeah, yeah, that, that just was really the eye opener for me, my dad and you, and just for like, you know, we need to jump on this. Um, I think we're going to do have some great success with these guys. Absolutely. So, yeah, you're going to go to Hickory Motor Speedway and run a run a race this weekend. It's not a cars to a race, but really just to kind of shake the car down and get familiar with that track. That is a tough old track right there. And uh, to get you prepared for next weekend, second round of the cars to it. Are you looking forward to going to Hickory? Absolutely. Um, my dad actually used to race Hickory maybe gosh it has been 10 15 years ago um he's gonna go and finally witness that track um it's been years since he's raced and i think one of the biggest things about this race is to make sure nothing is actually wrong at dylan um i know there was one thing that was wrong with the car and that was the track bar and it was a little bent but it wouldn't it wouldn't have affected our speed very much um so we're really utilizing this and saying that we really need to put in as much laps as possible. And the more laps I can get, the more laps I have experience as racing too. You know, we're not just going there to practice, we're going there to race, um, run 40 laps full out 100%. Um, and I think there's gonna be quite a few people from what I'm hearing in uh, Facebook and Instagram and all that types of things. So we'll have a good group of cars and I think some yeah. cars to guys will be there. So that will be, um, a great baseline of where we're at and hopefully we can, you know, sweep the 2040s and um, get some good learning aspect and knowing what to expect. Yeah. There's going to be a good group of cars there. So, um, so let's kind of shift a little bit from the cars tour and the pavement racing. And let's talk about, well, b before we do that, let me ask you a straight up question. Cause I know a lot of people would like to know this. You are, very, very good in a super late model. What have you had to adjust in your dr driving style to be able to, to go from a, uh, a late, uh, super late model to a late model stock? What, what have you, what kind of changes have you had to make besides just the mental changes? Um, I would say the more feeling in the rear end of a super late model is much more significant than a late model stock. Um, mostly, a lot of our changes that are in the late mile stock are in the front end and the shocks and the bump stops and all that types of stuff. Um, I, I can't remember the last time when I raced with Bond and Troy uh, and Donnie's Wilson's equipment that we didn't go to the front end and change something. It was, all, it was just all in the rear. Um, no matter if it had to do a skew, um, a shock change or uh, a spring change, no matter what it was, track bar change, it didn't matter. Um, because mostly on all that super stuff is mostly the front end is the front end. They really don't want to change anything that's on the front end. It's everything has to do with rear turn um, in the super because you want the car to free roll as much as possible. Um, but with the late mile stock, you really have to make sure that you got four drive. Four drive and a late mile stock comes from the front end, which sounds weird, but without the front end of actually um, turning, you can't really have uh, the drive off to push off the corner and have great center speed. So with the super, we want great center speed with the late mile stock. We want great exit speed. So all that 
is with the super and the rear end to have free roll in the late mall stock is to have just enough turn in the center for the rear end to actually have drive off the corner in a late mall stock. So it's basically flip flop from what I, you would actually be uh, used to. Right. So um, announced today is that you're going to have a teammate for like five races and that's going to be Grant Thompson. And you and Grant have been friends for a long time. And I know Grant really, really looks up to you. And, and he's so excited to be able to come over to Justin Johnson Racing and run and be able to learn from you. Um, I mean, when I told him he was going to do that, I mean, I, I, I thought he was just going to explode. So what do you think about that? What do you think about having Grant as a teammate for, like I said, it's only going to be for five races, but um, that, that should be interesting. Yeah, I think I'll learn a lot. Um, for as many starts he's had in a, not in a super, but in a pro late mile, who raced a super later, um, I think you'll really, really learn of, you know, people are not afraid to use contact, front bumper and rear bumper contact. So I think he's going to learn a lot having that rookie stripe. I learned that pretty uh, early at Dillon. Uh, people are going to bump you. People are going to try to move you out of the way. Um, I think he'll kind of have the little struggle at first, but I think he'll catch it pretty quickly. Um, I think he's like me. He can adapt pretty fast. There's yeah. nothing really much to it. Um, he's a great little racer. He's ra he's won races, uh, big races. He won at the snowball on the truck. I mean, he's done well. Um, I've known him forever. So, I mean, anything I can help him with, I definitely will. Cause I really like to see us run up front. I think it's very possible for him to run the top five in the car stewards as well. Um, maybe take a race or two, but I think he'll do it. Um, so I, I really look forward to that. I had no idea until just now. So uh, I'll have to shoot him a call and just let him know that we're, I, I'm not going to take it easy on him. You know, I'm not going to give you all my secrets, <laughs> but I, I'm really, I've really looked forward to that. I think we'll have a great time. Well, and I think that's one of the things that, that I really like about Justin. And again, I've not known him that long, but you know, um, we're really kind of working on his driver development program. That's really what he wants to do. He wants to be a place where, you know, young drivers can come in, they can learn about the sport and, and he can have an influence on them and then watch them, you know, kind of move up. And, and I mean, let, let's, let's just say it like it is. I mean, gosh, he won at Dillon. I think he surprised every, I think he surprised himself a little bit, uh, but the car was good. And, you know, he made that last lap pass. And, and he got the win, and it was his first ever Cars Tour win. I think that's going to be good for the team. I think it's good for morale. Um, and like right now, I don't know of another team in the Cars Tour that is going to have the attention that Justin Johnson has because, number one, he won a race, and he's bringing in this amazing young talent in yourself and in Grant Thompson. Yeah, um, I think we'll probably be one of the teams that will be wants to be the most part of the year. Um, I know Timothy Peters and his group, Autos by Nelson, will be uh, running a lot of cars tour. Bobby is a great driver. Um, I think we'll be in that top three team vicinity of who's to beat almost every week. And that's my goal is to make sure that when we show up that people are, are chasing us and we're not chasing them. Um, so I think that will probably be most of the goals for yeah. Uh, I know the one thing that you had said earlier that, you know, that yellow bumper, yellow stripe on your bumper and people, you know, want to, you know, kind of bump you and move you out of the way. What they're going to learn about Kate and Honeycutt real quick is, is you'll put the bumper to them as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I did that at Dillon. I wasn't afraid to. <laughs> and I uh, think that comes a lot from your dirt racing. So let's, let's talk about the dirt racing as we kind of wrap up this interview. I know that you spent the winter basically going through your dirt mod and your dirt late model. So where do we set with that and how much are we going to be seeing Caden Honeycutt, you know, slinging some dirt throughout the year? Oh, the Dirt Late Ball Series, I'm very fortunate enough to have those on the off weekend of Cars Tour. Um, fortunately, Mark uh, Shipman had the schedule and he was able to do that. Um, it kind of just fell into place so that we'll probably miss three or four races on his schedule running his full season on the late model. Um, the Sport Mod does have uh, select races. Um it's kind of hard for me to say, but we're probably thinking about selling that car. Um, we'll probably run that nine or 10 times this year, maybe. Um, that won't be raced a lot, but it's finished. Uh, both cars are finished. We had those finished like last month. Um, 
Well, now we're just waiting on the uh, late model motor to come in this week. And I'll have that car finished by next week or so. And the sport mod is completely, completely finished tires are ready. And it's whenever we get to go and race, it is when it's really, uh, be on the round rolling. So you know, their racing will be on every other weekend. That car store is not racing. Right. You know, and I loved it last year because we would talk during the middle of the week and you'd be like, man, I need some money. I need to, get, I mean, you know, you were stash pile of money. That's what I like about you. You know, not only do you work on your own cars, not only are you, you want to race every time you get a chance, but you went out and you're, you're like, okay, I was going to go here, but this track is offering up, you know, about a thousand dollars more, you know, to win that dirt race. I'm going to go get that check. And you've kind of helped self fund yourself a little bit for this year. And I think that makes you uh, really kind of stand out in a crowd, if you would, because there's not a lot of drivers that do that. And, and my hat goes off to you for, for, for taking that initiative, working so hard. And like I said, I think every time you show up at a dirt track, everybody's got to be going like, oh, crap, here comes the Red Rocket and Caden. It's, they're going to be the ones to beat. So that's got to be a great feeling. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've had such an amazing time of learning and enjoying the racing. Well, you know, on asphalt, it's, it's all business for me and asphalt and dirt. I can kind of relax and have fun with my dad. Um, don't get to do that. Probably won't get to do that too much more often here in the next couple of years. So that will kind of, yeah. um, kind of try to sink in a little bit, but you know, I've, I really enjoy it. Um, I think we did that most of the part last year for ARCA, uh, in 2019 is when I used my money from what we ran in dirt racing, uh, to race and get ARCA tires for those weekends. So, um, yeah, that, those, those times are coming in to an end pretty soon. Um, but hopefully not too soon. I really enjoy my time with my dad. Um, but you know, I'll race any chance I get with them, uh, any time of the weekend and no matter if it's asphalt or dirt. Right. So we've only got a couple minutes left. Let's talk real quick because again, when you're not on the dirt, when you're not on the pavement, you're, 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 you're eye racing and you're competing this year in the road to pro, just like you did last year. So in about 30 seconds, give us a, a little game plan on what's going on in the eye racing world. So first round is all the way up to, I'm pretty sure, August. Uh, I will not be on my own sim rig for the entire first round. I'll have be racing on other people's sim rig to make it into the top 70 on points. Second round moves on. Uh, what's called snake splits, so random people will be in your splits from the top 70, and the top 20 from that go to Pro Series in December, which we were seven points away from last year of making in the top 20 and I was I'm so I'm, I love the Xfinity car so I'm very I'm very adamant and I really want to get back uh into that series and make it to round two or make it to the top 20 in points so now that I have experience I have a full year now I know what to expect and I think we'll be a lot more patient this year and uh, we have fast we're probably going to have faster race cars and we had really fast cars last time so um so I do a lot of the setups myself so we're going right. to see how it goes Real quick, does it make a big difference you not being in your sim if you had to use someone else's? Um, experiencing that um, last weekend, yes, it did. Um, with a complete different setup, complete different wheel and set of pedals, it was a whole new world. I got an hour and 30 minutes before that race started. And I was like, oh, crap, I need to do two fuel runs. I need to do a mock pit stop. I need to do a qualifying run. There's a lot of stuff I had to do, and I wasn't able to do it. So I basically just went in the race. And then I qualified well. I qualified fourth. And um, I think I said if I had my own own rig, I would have finished probably second or third. But that was at best. But it's definitely a huge difference. You still had a top five finish. Yeah, absolutely. And we're 16th in points out of a thousand something people that raced uh, the other night. So we're in good shape right now. All right. So, Caden, we need to wrap this up. Do you have anybody that you want to thank? Any sponsors that you want to give a shout out to? Uh, thank you, mom and dad. Uh, appreciate y'all's hard work for the past 10 years I've been racing. Thank you, Rod, for what you've done for us, uh, guiding us in the right direction where we need to be in racing. Uh, Fabian, Gravel Locos, appreciate his help uh, this year. Uh, Greg, Greg Harper out in Montana, appreciate him coming on board for sponsoring us this whole year for the Cars Tour. Arc Aviation, Reality Roofing, thank you uh, for sponsoring our dirt racing this, again this year. Friends of Jacqueline Foundation for their support. Uh, per uh, per year audio and take line on the cars tour for let Justin Johnson racing and um, and there's so many and my friends and family I appreciate their help and their support as always 
Well, there you've got it, ladies and gentlemen. One of the top, I think, young racers in the country. I think he's going to prove it this year. If you've not followed Caden, check out Caden at CadenHoneycutRacing.com. While you're there, visit his fan zone. Like him on social media. Sign up for his digital newsletter. Check out his apparel store. He's got a lot going on. So, Caden, thank you so much for being with us. Good luck this weekend at Hickory. And we'll look forward to that round two of the Cars Tour and then visiting back with you a little bit later um, in the year. So good luck this weekend. Everybody, thank you for watching. Um, as we always say, make sure to go out and support local racing in your community. My name is Rod Wortham. This is Caden Honeycutt, and we thank you for tuning in. We'll see you back here in two weeks.